Yo, this is it. Here we go. We got the TSM uh, intro coming up right here. Got uh, the setup for your garrison gains, basic setup for warehousing, mailing, posting, and buying off the auction house. Um, this is a very basic setup, but it's going to be applicable to anybody that's just getting started in TSM, and it's going to give you the tools that you need to start expanding all your operations. Let's go. This is how my silly build works. Uh, I got all the garrison is in its own category. So you got omens, cards of omens. Um, you got the trillium bars and you got the engineering and you also got the mounts. This way I put it all in here so that I can just select this one category when I'm searching on the auction house to fulfill all the components that I need to craft all these items. Um, looks complicated. We're going to take it one bite at a time. How do you eat an elephant? All at once, one bite at a time. Let's do it. All right. So I switched over to this new profile that I've been building out. Um, this profile is built to get the one click gold methods going, basically. So I'm going to continue to build it out to um, manage your inventory as well in the garrison. So we're going to create a new group. We're going to name this group Garrison Gains. Garrison Gains. We're going to go to the operations. I'm going to take off the auctioning ones and the mailing ones and crafting and shopping and sniper and vendoring and warehousing. What that does is it removes all of the defaults from TSM. So this group will be handled exactly how I want it to be. You gotta be careful. Press enter when you're typing the name in. Garrison Gaines, enter. All right. So now we're gonna need some subgroups in there, right? We're gonna need, um, say, inscription. We're gonna also have a profession for engineering. We're gonna also have a profession. We're going to also have a profession for alchemy. That's fine. You could label these, right? If you wanted to put them in a certain order, they want to put alchemy second. You could put a number in front. No big deal. Right now, this is the order of the profitability uh, of the daily one clicks. I'll just put it like that. So once you collect those uh, subsections of your garrison gains, uh, let's go into them. Let's do inscription first. Um, you're going to need a few different categories for this. Light parchment. You're going to need a boatload of this. So it's nice to set up its own group so that you can buy it from your uh, expedition yak or whatever mount you have to buy um, crafting items from. You buy it in bulk. Uh, let's see, herbs, water herbs are going to go into here. We got cerulean. It's going to go into here. And I, I like to make a section for blood cards just for um, cleanliness of your inventory, basically. All right. So. Let's take a look. Let's add the items into these groups, right? So we're in the group management here. The water herbs are pretty specific. Let's see if I can remember them all. <laughs> so when you're adding items, you can't actually add them from the subgroup. You need to go to the base group and search it for the item. Fireweed. I know that's one. Fireweed. So you select it. Select the group. Water herbs. Select group, move one item. Easy. You can add these items over there too. If you're really hurting for gold, I don't recommend it. So we're going to add all these. It's really not hard. It'll save the settings, right? This will send it right to where I want it to. Frostweed, uh, gore, gore fiend, gore mouth. 
<laughs> what is that thing called? I don't know. I can't attack that. Uh, let's see what else. Fireweed, frostweed. I thought there was a gore one. Oh man, I'm gonna struggle with this. You know what I need to do? Gore grand. My trap. Got it. So select the group and move the item. What else we got? Nagrand. Arrow blooms. Move them. Star flowers. Alador. Orchid. 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 Alright. All those herbs are set. Uh, let's see. We gotta add the cerulean. They gotta go to the base group. Cerulean pigment. We're not putting it in herbs. We're gonna put it in cerulean. M move it. You can also select multiple items. So go ahead and select all these blood cards and throw them into the blood card category. That way you can just tell TSM to sell all the blood cards at once. Keeps it a little bit more organized. What do we got? Light parchment. All right. So that's all you got to do to set up your uh, inscription for Warlords of Drainer. It's really, it's really not hard to set up the grouping for it. So now what we need to do is we need to set up the... Uh, you know what we'll do? We'll set up these other items first. Hang tight. All right. So inscription's all set up uh, for your grouping. And we're going to set up engineering as well. So uh, let's go ahead and make a group for horse. And let's make a group for ghost iron bars. What else is useful in engineering? Anvils are useful. You need to make a separate group for anvil because you don't want 200 anvils in your inventory. You only want a couple. I actually like the... Um, let's make an ultimate... Ultimate... Gnomish... Army Knife. So, we're going to do individual items into these because we want the restocking to do specific pieces. So go ahead and add these items to the groupings. It's all good. Go start bars. So you got to go to the base group, do your search, search items in the base group to pull them into your subgroups. You don't want to put in anvils. Those are ghost iron bars. You're going to want a specific amount of those. So you got to break it out individually. True iron ore. True iron ore and black rock ore. When you're using them for the warlords uh, crafting, it really, you need the same amount of both of them. So I just keep them together. So you'll notice that in this base group, um, once you move these items out of the base group into your subgroups, they disappear from the base group. So when I move it here, it goes away. Easy. So that's engineering. Engineering's group is set up. Let's do uh, alchemy real quick. So you have the items in your inventory. Well, it makes it real easy. Watch this. Trillium bars. You can select them in your actual... It'll have them... If you have them in your inventory, it will have them on your listing here. So you can add them right there. <laughs> 
Uh, what else do we need? We need... You need one of these Philosopher Stones, but you have to craft that anyway, so you don't need it to restock from your garrison. Or from your, uh, guild. That's, that's pretty much it. You don't even need these Volatile Lives anymore. Um, I'll add them in there, just in case you want to use it. Transmute Volatile Life. Sometimes you don't have enough money to create the Trilliums into Living Steels, so Volatile Life is a little bit of benefit, a little bit of profit. Might as well capture a little bit, right? So those are the individual items for your alchemy to do the daily one-click gold method for alchemy. So we got daily one-click for engineering. We got daily one-click for alchemy. Daily one-click for inscription. Um, and that's the daily one-clicks. So we need to get into another subgroup of the garrison gains, and that's the items that you get from your mission table. I like to create a section for don't shop because I don't want to shop for these items. I just want to sell these items. And then you can add items in there. Uh, you can add however many you want. There's some others that I keep in here I like to have. What else is in there? I got all kinds of junk and I don't shop for. Because basically whatever you're picking up... Um, uh, you can just dump into the don't shop because you're not trying to buy more of them. You're not trying to restock from the auction house. You're just trying to sell them on the auction house. And uh, you can put a don't shop section for uh, managing the prices of how much you post them on the auction house. I really don't care how much the coal fist sells for. I don't care how much the elixir of giant growth sells for. We'll throw a couple items in there. Items that you're getting from the mission tables. What else we got? Coal fist Gronlings. I don't want to see these when I run my shopping um, strings. What else do we not care about? Bunch of stuff. Anyways, you get the idea. So create a, create a section for don't shop. All this is is items that you're trying to sell. You're trying to liquidate. You're not trying to replenish from the auction house. Okay, let's take a look at uh, creating the warehousing side of these. So we went through and we cleared out the operations in the parent group of Garrison Gains. So the individual groups can have their own operations applied to them, um, but they don't pick up any because we cleared them out in the parent group. Uh, so let's take a look at each one of these. So we got engineering. These are the pieces you want to restock for engineering. So we need to create warehousing uh, operations for those items. So if you click the individual item operations, let's take a look, warehousing. We need to create a new warehousing operation for anvils because you only want two anvils. So uh, warehousing is how many to put into the bank. I always just, I always just double this up just in case. Keeping bags, yes. You want to keep two in your bags at all times. Keeping bank, no. You don't care about how many are in the bank. Restock quantity, absolutely restock. You want, every time it queues to restock from your um, your guild bank, you want to make sure that it's picking up at least two into your inventory. Well, two minimum, two maximum. Two on the dot. <laughs> Stack size multiples, sure. Stack size one is a one item, so it doesn't matter. Keeping bank. Again, I don't care if it's in the guild bank. I want to pull all of the guild bank into the individual characters as much as possible. So that's how to do that. Uh, go ahead and set that up and then go back to your group. I recommend you do this from the individual groups so that you have a little better control and uh, you see these things a little bit better. So we're going to do Ghost Iron Bars next. Create a new operation. Change it up. So this is just the warehousing part, but uh, we're going to go through each sep section. I want to do warehouse, mailing, and then eventually auctioning and crafting. Those are a little more complicated. So, I want you to move, 
Uh, Ghost Iron Bars. I set it at 150, but I have so many, I'm going to bump it up to 200. Multiple stack sizes, yeah. Doesn't matter to me. Keeping bags, yes. I want to keep 200 in my bags. Bags. Restock quantity. I want to restock 200. Ah, you know what? I'm going to mirror my other category. So I'm going to bring this down to 150. Just for consistency. You may not be at 150. You may not be at 200. You may be way over. It's up to you, buddy. Keep in the bank quantity. Don't want to keep any in the bank. So, once you go ahead and save that, you're good to go. So, as you're creating these, you're actually pulling from your group. So, if you're going into them from the group, it gives you a lot more control over what you need to do. Um, look at this. What is this doing over here? Remove that item. Add that item. So, you gotta, gotta pay attention to what you're doing, apparently. So, I'm going to go down to each one of these, and we're going to go through them. So, I need to add a new one for True Iron and Black Ore. Black Rock. What do we got? We got 200 of each. Quantity to move. 200. Stack size multiple. 200. Keep in bags. How many? 200. Keep in bank? No. Restock? Absolutely restock. You want it to restock you up to 200. Stack size multiple? Doesn't matter. Keep it in bank quantity? Again, no. So, once you set that, you're good to go. What do we got? Ultimate Army Knife? That's next. This helps because you can keep an inventory of Ultimate Army Knives in your uh, guild bank, and then you can just pull from it. Wanting to move? You only need one of these? I'll put it at one. Keep in bags? Obviously need to keep one. <laughs> keep in bank? Zero. Restock? One. Stack size? Multiple? Sure. Keep in bank? No. Alright, that's it. So now, when I go to this, uh, when I select this engineering group, it's going to go first to the garrison operations. There's none. I've overrided them so that there's no operations. Then it's going to go to engineering operations, which takes its parents. Uh, this is the parent category. It takes those uh, operations next, and I've removed those. However, the individual line items uh, do have operations. So when we go to our bank, we should be able to, to drop this stuff into our bank and then restock it, and it should pull. Not this, because I didn't set that up. I also didn't set up the Cerulean yet, but that's all good. So, let's take a look at all this. These are all the categories that I've made. Garrison Gains is what we're working on. Engineering is the only one with warehousing options, so it's the only one that pops up. So if you look at your group, since I cleared out the, uh, the group options, the operations, they're all at zero. You don't even see these alchemy and inscriptions yet. So, uh, when we select garrison gains, it's going to select everything in that category. We restock it. Hey, there's all our items. It's that easy. We're going to go through the next ones too. Might as well. Groups. Alchemy. There's actually less of these groups anyways. <laughs> Trillium bars. Operations. Warehouse is done. So you got to override parent operations. That means don't take the blank and add my personal one. Don't forget to rename these. You want to rename these because you're going to have a ton of operations and uh, this helps keep it clear. Keep it clean for you. What do we got? 200 of these things? Keep in bags. You always want to keep in bags. 200. This move quantity is moving to the bank. So on, you'll you'll see on the uh, 
light parchment paper, we're going to add a million of those things. The restock quantity is how many you're pulling from the bank. This is the critical piece. Actually, I'll, uh, I'll illustrate that right now. Keep bags in bank, or keep quantity in bank? No. Keep quantity in bags? Yes, you want to keep 200 so that you're not mailing it off. That's it. Trillion bars are set. Let's take a look. Alchemy, volatile lives. So let's add an a warehouse operations to restock volatile lives. Keeping bags. You always want to keep the quantity in bags that you have, you want to keep on your character. Oh, this is actually 400. And you may not want to do volatile lives. I actually don't recommend it anymore. Um, it's just not worth it. Used to be worth it. Not anymore. Global economy has changed it. Keeping bags quantity, you want to keep the minimum that you're restocking. Restock amount, 400. Stack size multiple, yes. I don't really remember what that is. Keeping bank quantity, I don't want to keep any in the bank. I'm going to go ahead and wrap that up. Wrap that up, B. All right. So now we've set up the group for alchemy. And now let's do inscription. Cerulean. Cerulean's going to be pumping, so you need to make sure you're on top of that. Create a new operation for that. Rename it. Cerulean. At some point, you could double this up, like 400 trilliums and 400 ceruleans, but for now, just keep it clean. Uh-oh. Blown up. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Back to what we were doing. Cerulean. We're creating the Cerulean. Stack size multiple? Yes. Keeping bags? Yes. I want to keep 400 in my bags. Keeping bank? Zero. Restock? Absolutely. Need to restock 400. Stack size multiple? Yep. Keeping bank? Nope. That's it. Cerulean's done. So let's go back to our groups. What else are we going to do? Light parchment? Definitely. So this one is... This one's a little different. We don't actually want to restock it into our bags, but we want to move it. So you're going to create a warehouse option, operation, quantity to move. I think... I don't even remember how many we can buy. Let's take a look at how many we can buy first. Then we'll create that operation based off of that. you like... 26,200. So, eh, let's see. That's another thousand. So, 20, 27,000. We'll say 28,000. 28,000 will cover the whole inventory. Farewell, friend of the so, Brummels. When you're buying that, eh, we could do the same. We could do this at the same many time. Wares. Buy them all. Now let's go back to our operations. Light parchment. Warehouse operation. New operation. Uh-oh. I didn't rename it. So if, if that happens, let's go back to it. It says new operations. It's got this little tab here. This says go to the operation. And then you can edit it directly. Wanted to move. He said 28,000. That's going to say take 28,000 out of my regular bank bags and move it into our, our bank. Sack size multiple. Sure. Keep in bags. You don't want to keep any in your bags. Keep in bank. You don't want to keep any in your bank. So make sure to move it all. Restocking. We're not restocking this from our bank into our bags. So we're not even going to allow that. That one's a little bit different. All right, now that that's set, uh, let's do the herbs. Herbs, um, 
you don't want to warehouse herbs from your guild bank into all your characters. You're going to want to mail all your herbs to one character that does all your milling. So there's actually no restock function that you want to do for this uh, category. So let's take a look at all those groups that we just set. Get off the mount. Get off the bank. We're going to go to our private bank first and I want to move all of this uh, parchment, right? So now that we've added operations to these groups, you'll see them populate in your warehousing, your UI TSM banking. So I'm going to select light parchment and I'm going to say, move it to the bank. It's going to take all that light parchment and move it right over. Easy. All right. So now what I also want to do is restock uh, our alchemy which we have our max amounts in here already and we want to restock our inscription so that's going to pull from here it also has light parchment let's so let's see what happens let's move this stuff down just so it's easier to see i don't i could restock engineering but it's just going to try to restock those items boom pulled them all over beauty that's it. So these, these categories are set up and I can prove that because what I'll do is I'll take this over to the guild bank and then it's going to search for all these operations in the guild bank to restock. Notice how it didn't pick up our light parchment. That's perfect. Don't set the restocking for light parchment. So I can go to the guild bank. I can select this whole category, which is going to go through all these subcategories and I do restock. There's nothing to move. There's nothing to move because this is all the maximums for those restocking options. This puts your inventory from only on your guild bank to on your guild bank and on your character. And these numbers, uh, say um, 150 ghost iron bars is about two weeks worth of transmutes. Not transmutes, but the engineering craft uh, is 10 a day. So... 10 a day times 14, 15. <laughs> so you got 15 days worth. Uh, ultimately, I wanted about two weeks worth of le leeway here. Uh, each day's transmute for um, trillium. What is that? Six trillion bars. So 200 divided by six, you got, you know, a month's worth. Uh, about the same with this. Uh, cerulean you got you got three or four um clears worth of cerulean same thing here three or four so you you bump up your inventory to about a month's worth of inventory and then you don't have to restock every time you clear your garrisons because your your bag inventory will cover your all your one clicks all your garrison clears it'll click it'll clear it all it'll cover it all it'll cover it all not clear it cover it um and you want to keep these thermal anvils if you're doing engineering. If you're not doing engineering, then don't stock them, right? Let's dump all this junk back in the mail here real quick. Say we're not an engineer. And we, right now, we're inscription and alchemy. So I don't even want to select that engineering. So this alt, I would select that garrison gains, but I would deselect the subgroup of engineering. And then when you hit restock bags, there's nothing to move. If this guy's only an engineer, I select engineering, restock bags, I'm going to pull over all the engineering items that I need based off of what you just set up. So that's a bottom line of how to set these up. And we're starting with the garrison gains, but you can apply that same method to everything you need. So since this guy is not... Uh, not an engineer. I'm just going to turn that off. Set them up for just alchemy and inscription. <laughs> That's it for this guy. Um, then you can log on to another character that is engineering and move that around as you see fit. So let's take a look at our groups again. Okay, we need to take a look at the mailing. We're going to set up mailing structures so that all of these extra items get mailed out to certain characters. You're going to want to have characters that collect all of the excess and then you use those characters to 
put all the excess into the bank. Real easy. Oh, take a look at that. You go back to the groups that you just set up. You got anvils. We're going to set up an operation for this. We're going to set up, again, we're overriding the parent operations. Parent operations are all set to nothing so that it doesn't do anything screwy that we don't expect it to. So we're going to create a mailing operation. I like to name these by the character that they're going to receive it. And the quantity that you want to keep in your bags. It just kind of keeps it organized. Nice. Didn't save the name. So... Uh, let's see. Rage. Seeker. Keep two. Obviously, I'm going to send this to Rage. I'm going to keep two. Set max quantity. I don't remember what that is, so we're going to leave that to no. And that's that. So the anvil. So when you go over to mailing groups, it's going to check the mailing operation for that anvil. Once you've set it up through that. So now it has a warehousing to restock from the guild bank. And then it has a mailing operation to mail any extras to whatever character you design. So we're going to go through and we're going to set up a mailing structure for each one of these items. Uh, let's say, let's also send this to Rage. We're going to be keeping 150 because remember our... Uh, warehousing operation is restocking 150. So you want to keep 150 and you want to mail out the extras. Keep 150. Set max quantity. Whatever that means. I don't remember. But I'm leaving it blank. Renaming it is rough. <laughs> enter. Make sure to enter. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look at that. Make sure the operation's on there. It is. Ores. Ores is a little different because we're keeping 200. When I send this string out, I'm going to have to delete these character names and just leave them blank. All right. All right. What am I doing? What am I doing here? Go to the ORs, go to the operations, override a parent, and add a new one. We're going to call this one keep 200. That easy. So we're going to go through each one of these. Um, this way, when you're creating these uh, ultimate no oh, gnomish army knives, you can mail them off to your um, salesperson, your bank alts. it all right so now all of these engineerings have a mailing operation anvil ice keep two ghost iron keep 150 ores keep 200 um ultimate gnomish harmony i keep one so when i go to mailing groups it's going to go to each one of those individual operations and try to sell them out uh, not sell them out send them out to the uh appropriate operation so we're going to set up the actually i'm going to mail those out so I'm going to go to mail. When you open up your mailbox with TSM, you go over to groups, take the, all of this off just to show you guys. Minimize, 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 deselect. So now engineering has uh, all of those set up. So I have, obviously I have extras of these things. So let's see what happens with them. Sends them all out. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. 
So now I have the two uh, two anvils, the 150 ore, uh, excuse me, ghost iron bar, and then the 200 ores for each. Easy peasy. So let's go through and let's make those male selections for the other categories. The other groups, excuse me. Gotta be specific, you know what I'm saying? So Trillium Bars is keep 200. I'm going to add a new one. I'm going to say... Uh, the Trillium Bars, I want them to go to a different character because Ghost Iron Bars will fill up that one initial character. So I'm going to give it a different character name for uh, Trillium. You want to keep 200 because that's the minimum amount that we are the minimum and the maximum it's the exact amount that we're restocking <laughs> so go ahead and put that there yeah dang it so we're going to keep 200 on alpaca uh we're going to keep 200 on every character and then we're going to send over the extras of these trilliums so we need to set up the same thing for the volatile life mailing create a new operation i'll make this character all of the components for alchemy we keep 400 of this piece and that's it so i put the name in the in the operation and then I put the quantity that they're keeping that way you can reuse some of these if you want to um, once you get a little more complicated and complex with your structures no big deal so volatile life good trillion bar good inscription we're doing the same thing we're giving it a mailing operation Uh, again, you want to set up characters for each one of the, um, professions so that you don't have them all going to one character and overwhelming that character. Eventually you're going to have so many that that character's inventory fills up. <laughs> How many times am I going to misclick and click off the name? Keeping 400 ceruleans. Make sure that took. Operation. Keep 400. Perfect. Light parchment. You're not mailing it, so it doesn't matter. Your herbs do matter. You obviously want to buy herbs on all your characters, and you're going to want to mail those herbs to your um, mass miller. Mass miller. So I don't want to keep any of these things. Why keep Why keep herbs when you gotta mill them on it on a character? Keeping zero. Alright. I think that's all the groups we need to set up. So the mailing operation. Uh, again with the herbs, you want to mail them off to your mass miller. So that your mass miller can just mass mill and you can just walk away. Um Cerulean, you're not mailing any Cerulean. You're always restocking from your um, uh, your guild bank. However, if you do, like your uh, mass miller will have extras of these. You do want them to mail. If you want them to mail out, cool. It's your mass miller, so they shouldn't be mailing anywhere anyways. Doesn't really matter. No big deal. Light parchment, you're not mailing at all. Blood cards, you're not mailing at all. Um... That should cover these two as well. So let's take a look at the, we go to the groups, unselect engineering, cause that worked. I'm gonna do alchemy. So it should send out all these down here and it should keep these two. Hey, it did the opposite. Kept these three down here, <laughs> but it kept exactly what we needed. So we're gonna do the same thing with inscription. It's gonna keep 400 here and then mail off another 400. Beautiful. So, uh, now that we got our mail groups set up, 
Oh man, it is going to save so much time. You go to these, every time you go to uh, the mailbox, just select your garrison gains, mail selected groups, and it's going to sail off all your extra material. Sail off? Send off? It's going to mail? Mail sale? <laughs> Woo! That was a good one. It's going to mail off all your extra materials. <laughs> <laughs> to exactly the people that you wanted to go to and they're going to hold your inventory and then they're going to restock the guild bank <laughs> oh man uh so that's that's mailing operations in a nutshell um so now we have restocking we have mailing and we're going to cover um we're going to cover the auction house posting and the crafting let's do it all right, we need to take a look at the auction house. Let's do it. So, when I open the auction house, I see my other groups here because I have uh, functions set up for them. Uh, we need to go to the garrison gains. We need to look at the operations. I overrided them all. So, we need to take a look at these warlord herbs. You want an auction house string for these. Shopping operations control the buyout from the auction house. That's what we need create one maximum auction house price set it at 1g because then all you can see you'll see show the auctions above the max price nah i don't need to see them just show me 1g and below maximum restock quantity doesn't matter that's it you don't really need to mess around with these things. This is a basic auction house string. Uh, all it's going to say is show us everything in this group uh, at 1G or below. So let's just make sure about that. Auction house wad herbs. Looks good. 1G. Maximum restock. Max them out. Was that 50,000? Cool. All right. So now let's run... Let's check our warehouse or our auction house functions. Now we see garrison gains there. So if you open up garrison gains, it's got wad herbs. Let's run the shopping scan, see if there's anything on there. So there's some at 1G or below. Uh, say you need to, say you're just starting and you want to set that uh, herb price a little bit higher. You can. If you're desperate for herbs, you can. Uh, water herbs, operations, chopping operations, water herbs at 1.25 gold. I guess you can't do that. Say two gold. Or say just one gold and then show me above the max price so that you can monitor the price of these things and then buy them when they're low. Or buy them whenever you want. <laughs> I'm not your parent. <laughs> so that's going to go through that whole string and that's going to say... Show us everything over 2G. So we, we want them at 1G, but show us anything that's over the buyout. See this percentage here? This is 2G, so it's 100% on top of your maximum that you want to pay for it. That's what that piece means, which is important because you're going to want to see that. When you open up the auction house, you can look at that on, a, on the fly and you'll know uh, if it's a good price or not. So when you're setting up that group, boom, 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 boom. when you're setting that group, this max auction house price is going to be your 100% here. So this is the price you're really going to want to set with the maximum amount that you're going to want to pay for these items. Uh, you can play around with this show auctions above max price. I don't typically because I don't want to see the auction if it's not um if it's not in the price range that i want so i set this as the price range that i want and then i i trigger that off to not even show me these other ones i don't want to see these i'm not going to buy them don't show them once you don't show them you do another scan look you can see them going away because they're all over the price it's that easy you want to watch them and you want to keep your eye on it show them do whatever you want man that's it um so, is there any other groups that I want to do that for? 
Yeah, ores. I definitely want to have a shopping string for these ores as well. Same thing. Maximum auction house price. I want it at 1G. Do I want to show it over 1G? No. So technically you could put this in the same group here. You do whatever you want. I like having them separated just so that it's uh, a little cleaner on the uh, creation side. Anvils. I like setting the shopping price of the anvils really low. Because then you're going to see anvils that are like say 5G. If five Anvils are 5G on the auction house. Buy a bunch, right? That's super cheap. Usually they run around 20. So you can name these uh, what you're actually looking for. Oops. The price that you're looking for. 1G on the ores, for example. Water herbs. 1G. Take a look at the groups. Ghost Iron Bars. Ghost Iron Bars are a little bit different because you do want to shop for those. So let's take a look at that shopping string. Max auction price for a Ghost Iron Bar. I like buying them at 9 gold. I would put the maximum at 10G and to show above prices so that you can keep an eye on it. Max restock amount. This doesn't matter. You restock however much you want. We'll call that ghost iron and we'll put the ore in there too. Uh, ghost iron ore. Excuse me. Oops. We don't want to do that. I just want to add ghost iron ore to that ghost iron bar group. Move them. So now, when I go to that ghost iron bar group, it's going to actually have ore and bars in there. So it's going to treat them the same. Do I want it to? No. I actually do need to make a subgroup for this. Because we don't want to stock ghost iron ore. So actually, I can go over here, go to items. It's going to show you the parent items that go all the way up. Uh, we're going to move the ore into this subgroup. And then we're going to alter the operations here. Mailing. We don't want to keep any. So actually, we need to override that keep 150. And we just need to mail all to rage. Keep zero. Max quantity. Nothing. Oh, that'll send it to rage. So what that does is it will take the operations from the parent group naturally. Uh, shopping operation. Yeah, we do want it to shop. So maximum auction house price is 10. It's actually four, uh, five, excuse me. So it's not critical. It's going to throw off your percentage and show where it, where it shows in your shopping list. It's not that bad. Not gonna work. We're gonna look at the other operations. So, shopping, yes. Warehousing, no. We don't want it to warehouse. I don't want to restock ore out of my guild bank. So, now that's set up. Anvils are set up. Ultimate Gnomish Army Knife. We need this. Do we need to buy it from the auction house? Probably not. You should be building enough of these from your actual characters. I'm going to leave that off of the shopping string. No shopping for that. Alchemy? Trillium bars? You could watch the uh, the price of these trillium bars, but ultimately you're going to want to be transmuting them through ghost iron. When you transmute them, you're getting that 20% gains. Don't leave it on the table. Transmute your trillium. Don't buy it raw. Volatile life? I'm not shopping for this anymore, so I'm not creating anything for it. Cerulean you can't shop for. Uh, light, light parchment comes from your uh, bank. 
your mount that has the uh, general item sales. And that's it. Don't shop means don't shop. So any items that you add into this group, you don't want to shop for. So leave it off. All right, yeah, that's good for now. Now you can see there's extra items in here. Let's run the scan. Let's see what shows up. That's going to show me any ghost iron bars that are over nine gold, under nine gold, 10 gold, under 10, because I set the minimum at 10 gold. So it's going to show me the ghost iron ore under 10 and the ghost iron bars under 10. Don't buy this percentage, but use it as items that you're going to want to look at. So, just populated all of the items that we wanted to take a look at. Anything, any of the ore that was under gold, and any of the herbs that was under gold, and then the ghost iron that was under 10. That's that. So, that's the basics of setting up your shopping strings. Again, you want to always go back to your group and set up your shopping strings individually for your group before you start setting one string for a bunch of different groups. Uh, you, you can do that. Uh, it's just, you need to understand it a little better for, um, for your own safety. <laughs> hey, that's shopping strings right there in a nutshell. Okay. I do want to touch base on this. I like to create a category that is don't shop. I don't want to run any shopping procedure on this, but I do want to sell these items. So I set this up and I set some subcategories for uh, mission table rewards, for example. So I do want to sell these, and I don't really care how much they sell for. I get so many that I just want them to sell. So we're going to create that auction house process for selling these. We're going to call this mission. We're going to call this just sell it. Ignore auction duration. Sure. Management items, group management, posting. We're going to change this to 12. I think 12 is good. You refresh your auctions a couple times a day. Post cap. Again, we just want to sell it. So whatever we have in our inventory, uh, we want to sell them. So we're going to put post cap as high. Amount kept in bags is zero. Don't post after this many expires. Just keep posting them. Uh, set the bid as a percentage of buyout. I just leave these the same, 100%, undercut at 0C, good, minimum price. We don't care about how much profit we're getting from these because they're just free from garrison resources. So if you want to run these, uh, if you want to run these minimums and things, cool. If it, it doesn't matter, just take it down. Maximum price, leave that one. Uh, let. Let TSM do whatever crazy calculation this is to get the maximum price. When above the maximum, let it do whatever it wants. But ultimately, we just want to sell it. So as long as it, it... These are the items that are for free. As long as it's selling, sell it. You're not going to be posting it at 1G. All right, canceling. Cancel undercut auctions, yes. Cancel to repost, yes. Repost threshold, 1G, fine. All right, that's that. So then when we go up here and we go to that group, we're gonna deselect these. That's browsing, that's shopping for. We're gonna look at posting. Looks like I got posting operations on these others I gotta clear out. Don't shop, mission table rewards, run the post scan. I have none in my inventory. Let's grab some. Let's grab some from the bank. What do you say? I say pause. I say unpause. Take a look at the post scan. So I grabbed some of these frozen arms. I'm gonna look at the auction house. It's gonna say anything posted, posted one gold and above. Let's post it at the minimum price of whatever everybody else is. So, if I post this, I believe it's going to post all of these. And I don't want to post all. I want to keep them. But we might as well do it for science. Big error. <laughs> Reload. Let's try it again. Maybe we got a setting off that's freaking it out, man. We'll fix it. 
Post. Yeah, took them all in and posted them. So there's my auction. Posted at the minimum price under a copper. You're just selling these things. I'm going to cancel it because I want to keep those. Um, but that's that group. Just sell it. Mission table rewards. Sales operation. Just sell it. Hello. Mission table rewards to hold on to. These are items that you can use across your account. So you're going to want a... Not something that you're going to be selling. So there's no auction house. But it is something that you're going to want to mail. So... Send it off to one of your one of your folks. Send it off to a uh, new person. Who do I send it to? I send it to Null. I'm going to create a new operation. I'm going to rename it. Null. So I rename it the character name. Toss in the character name. I don't want to keep any in my bags. I want to I want to mail it off completely. Um. This means whenever I loot it from those mission table rewards, I will send it off to Null Seeker, and he we that character will hold them in their bank. Um. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So then, when I go over to the mailbox, I'm gonna loot that, and then I'm gonna mail it off. Open it. Mail it. So that's going to go through all these mailing operations selected. Nothing to send. What is that about? So. <laughs> There's a little bit of tweaking that you always have to. I didn't set up a mail operation for the for sale items. For sale items. We got the, the selling. But we didn't set up a mailing. But we're going to add the mailing to. Same character. So since I already set that up, I can just add it from there. And then when I go to uh, send off the groups, boom, mailed it off to them. That's that's it in a nutshell. Another nutshell, the second nutshell. <laughs> Fourth quick note that under your mailbox and go over to other, you can set up your amount to keep, your gold amount to keep on your character and send all the excess gold to a character that you send. Be sure that you're sending it to the right character. <laughs> you don't want to send all your gold to some random file player. So once you hit other and then you hit send gold, it'll send it to that character and it'll take you down to the minimum you set. Easy. Okay, let's take a look at one, the profile that's more established. I have all of my mailing operations in here. And I've created this quick list of possible characters that you may be interested in and having a mailing operation set up for each one of them. Um, you'll see that there's multiple mailing operations for different quantities of keeping. Uh, keep 150, keep 200, keep 1, keep 20, keep 5, keep nothing. Um, you just build it out as you need it, as you see fit. Uh, I have two bank tunes, I have a card popper, I have a dual crafter that does panther mounts, I have an enchanter, I have an engineer that's goblin, an engineer that's gnome, <laughs> I have my jewel crafter picks up all my random account bound items, um, so that can be the same character. You could have characters that have multiple functions here, obviously, but once you get to a very large scale, you might need individual characters for each one of these. Uh, Ghost Iron Bar Transmuter to Trillium Bar. So that all of your Iron Bars go to this, uh, excuse me, Ghost Iron Bars go to this character and this character just transmute all of the Trillium, all into Trillium. Uh, a Mining Smelter so that you can buy the ore and smelt it yourself on the cheap. And... Uh, Mass Miller, obviously you're going to want one of those for Warlord's Herbs. Um, I have a second guild bank on one character that has a bunch of extra Ghost Iron Bars and a bunch of junk in there. Um, here and things that I couldn't fit in this normal restocking guild bank. I like this main guild bank to be able to restock all the items that are needed. Uh, and you 
You're going to want an individual tune that does the crafting for the Vial of the Sands. Make that an alchemy master uh, for flask mastery. So that when you're cra crafting your flasks for the Vial of the Sands, you'll get procs. You want that 20% proc rate, man. Um, ultimately, what you want to do is make sure that your materials to craft go to the correct person. So, for example, the mining smelter gets all of the ghost iron ore. But then once they're ghost iron bars, there's a whole new character for that and a new mailing operation to go to the ghost iron bar um, crafter. So uh, you're going to break it down however you see fit. This is just an example of how I have these set up and an example of characters that I think are pretty critical to the mass gold gains. But you're going to scale into it. So don't worry about making all these characters off the get-go. Just uh, start with that garrison, those garrison and the one-click golds. Um, we covered that in pretty good detail. So start there and build up to however you much we want to. How much of a goblin you want to be, you know what I'm saying? And that's it. That's it. Easy. Intro to a TSM. That covers the basics of your TSM strings for your garrison gains. And, uh, you know, I'll do some more videos on some more of the nuanced pieces of um, crafting the mounts and creating custom prices and uh, custom calculation strings and things like that. But don't worry about all that. Just get, a, get, get your basic setup ready and uh, go from there. Hey, it's just a dude. You, uh, you see these over here?